Art students, Brian Proctor, the art teacher, back again with another video. And this one today will be on, it's a combination, drawing action pose position and then dressing the action pose that you draw. Because I'm sure you don't want to draw naked characters running around your comic book all day. So let's get into doing clothes and action poses at the same time. Let's go. All right, so there is a big difference between drawing the anatomy and then drawing clothes on the anatomy. Now, I've been spending so much time showing you guys how to draw the anatomy that I have not showed you what it looks like to put clothes on your character or your drawing. So in this series of videos, we're going to start doing action pose positions dressed or with clothes. So before we get started doing that, is you need to know a little bit about fabric and how clothes fit and so forth. So let's jump into that real quick because it's going to be really important when it's time to actually start drawing. Okay, so let's talk about clothes a little bit. So if you've never drawn clothes before, clothes are pretty simple. The only hard part about doing clothes is the, the twist and the turns they make when on the body. So let's just start out by drawing, let's say your basic t-shirt. And everything is a shape, and that's every time I sh draw, I show you that stuff is just basically a shape. So t-shirt, um, rectangle, and let's do one long sleeve, one short sleeve. Just long rectangle, short square, off the side, straight down, off the side. You do a U, an open U like that, and a small sh U like that. And it's almost like drawing a smile, drawing somebody smiling like that. That's pretty simple. You have your t-shirt right there. Now you have um, your seam is right there where it's sewn together and anytime you have a seam that's where your pulls are going to come from. Now you're going to have either you have pulls, wrinkles, not wrinkles, I'm sorry, it's going to be pulls, folds, or it was something else. I forgot. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you in a second. So, uh, but if I say wrinkles then you know I don't mean wrinkles as in your clothes are, haven't been ironed it's 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 not a wrinkle but if I say wrinkle you'll understand what I'm saying compression thank you is pull fold and compression so t-shirts pretty simple um, dress shirts dress shirts and they all start out by with your rectangle you just have to look at clothes take some clothes out and lay it down and then see what uh, you know see what it looks like where the seams are because the seams are different on a uh, t-shirt than a dress shirt because a dress shirt is going to come out just a little bit more just like a suit coat and go in or some of them come in shorter and go out and turn like that so it all depends on your um, clothes that you're wearing because when you start to turn and move it makes a really big difference so let's just do <clears throat> let's just do this let's just give it a little turn out what's happening to my boys open it up because you have a button-up shirt and then it's going to go out. So basically your collar, a lot of people have trouble drawing collars. It's just a triangle like that. Then you want to come up a little bit and you want to go down like this. Yeah, that would be nice if people can see it, Brian. Sorry, this is my camera is weird. So again, triangle. You're going to come up a little bit and you're going to go out and down like that. It's almost like drawing an hourglass or two, two um, triangles, almost. So if you're going to have this V right there, the point's going to be there. And then you just bring it down a little bit here. And then you come there. So you want more here than you do there. And then you have your collar for your shirt because this part comes down when buttoned up. This part comes down a little bit. And then down and then you have your buttons now most times if you're doing that you're gonna have a tie if you have a button-up shirt you have a tie but let me do this one thing let me round this off because if it's on a person's neck it's gonna be rounded off so it's gonna be like this and then from there you're gonna have this and again it's gonna come up like that up again and that and come down like that so you give gives it gives it that more roundness feeling to it so if you're going to have a tie a tie is just going to be this again a triangle again and it's going to be under here 
because remember the tie goes all the way around your neck for those people who have not worn ties it's all the way around your neck so you have this hit that triangle and then you're going to have this comes down right like that so if you have this triangle here you're just going to have the tie part come down like that and it's just simple to draw a tie so if it's open as i say it's going to come up and then you're going to have that that triangle round it off but if you're having trouble around it, I'll just do the triangle. Then you're going to come down, down, down a little bit here, and then up to it. And there's your open shirt. So you have your shoulder right here, right here, and then that seam, and then you have your long sleeve. Now, the difference between like a dress shirt and a regular shirt is that a dress shirt is going to have that cuff. Cuff? Is that a cup or is that for the pants? Anyway, on the sleeve. Now, it's going to have that button, usually at the bottom. And a lot of times it's going to, because it is kind of pressed in, and I'll get to that in just a second. You're going to have these wrinkles coming from that sleeve. Same thing on the side. And then you have these wrinkles coming from that sleeve. And then you have your your button holes and then your buttons and you cannot forget a pocket because usually dress shirts will have a pocket and most pockets have that point and then they have that something sewn right there I guess for strength so you're gonna have that for your dress shirt okay pants 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 your pants just regular pants are just kind of like drawing the letter A, almost. Just that up, that, that, uh, uh, get it together. It's like drawing the letter A. If I drew the letter A, it's going to start out like this and come up. Now, if I do the letter A, it's going to be flat here, but you're not going to make it flat there. You're not going to make the line. You're just going to have that point like that. And these are just pants. So pants are going to come up. You're going to have that seam right here, especially jeans. These are jeans. You're going to have that seam right here, and then you're going to come down, and it's going to have this little knife edge. I don't know what that's called, but that's where your zipper goes and your button right there. But you're going to have this little space here because this doesn't come all the way down. You're going to have this seam across here, and then your belt hooks, which are actually going to come down past that seam line. And of course, with jeans, you're always going to have that double thick, double stitch. And then you have, they give you another line um, that goes across the back, actually. I'm sure I'm not, it's not the front, it is the back. Jeans, usually the pockets, the pockets are different on jeans. A lot of stuff are different on jeans than on uh, slacks. Because jeans pocket, jean pockets usually curve like that. And then they can have that little uh, coin holder, a little piece for coin holders right there. And of course, you've got your, your inner seam, which you won't see sometimes unless you're turned and your outer seam. And usually jeans have, um, as I said, it's like a double stitch kind of thing to, because it's a thick material and you don't want to rip it. From the back, same thing. And this is just opening your eyes to close. So when you start drawing them, you're just not going to draw like some wrinkles or some stretch marks on some legs. Or arms you have to know the construction of a thing before you can actually draw it so this is the back you're gonna have that double stitch from the back of course you're gonna have your pockets right here they'll, they'll give you that extra double stitch that goes across and then you have the one from up top um, I'm raising this up a little bit more this goes all the way up and then you, you have your belt hooks and all that is double um stitched and of course you don't forget about your seams on your inside and your outside and then they usually have most of them usually have some kind of something there or whatever in between the pockets just their, their little symbol there so slacks hopefully that was on camera because i did not look at the monitor one time Slacks real quick, same thing, the letter A, of course you 
course, they're going to be a lot longer than that, but just for the sake of, you know, drawing. So that's in the front are going to have less stitching than the jeans. So they're going to have, instead of having like a double, double, kind of a double, double seam, kind of a double stitch on everything, it's going to just going to have a single So you're going to have this, of course, that's holding the two together. And then you're going to have that line there. But you won't really see this part. That part, they, they don't really have that. It's just as less lines as possible. It, it'll, it'll, it'll just be a little bit of this. And I don't really think they sew that. Don't, don't quote me. The, um, you have the seam for that. Your hooks, your belt hooks. Now, one thing with the pockets, you usually the pockets are on the side or the pockets are just a little slant like that. It's not like the jeans where it's curved down like that on the slant. And the biggest thing that um, a difference, if you're drawing, especially comics, and you want somebody to know that this person has a suit on or something nice, you always give it a, uh, a crease. Always draw that crease. And that way, it looks like the person has something that's really neat on or nice on and then some of them have that little those little wrinkles and i go with the wrinkles again um not pleats but in dress pants it's like these little folds that just they make it they bring it in sew it to make it tight okay forget that well, i just said that so and then you can also do this put that little v down at the bottom and it just kind of makes it look even neater, like they're, uh, they've are they been ironed. And I said, you don't want to draw all these extra lines. You don't want to have all these pockets. That's just the way slacks are made. And same thing for the back. And then after that, we'll get into why, why, and what, and how. The letter A. That one line for the back. And this is if you're doing like really close detail on jeans. Other than that, you know, most of the time your character is going to be twisting and bending. But just you still have to know how a thing is made. That sewn line, belt hooks, pockets. And usually these are just, they just have the top part of the pocket. They don't have the like the jeans. They don't come down like this because... It's about having everything nice and smooth. And then of course you have your lines again. And that's basically for your slacks and your jeans. Now, let me bring this back for a second. If you have a sweater type of shirt, then you can do an extra line here and then put your little sew lines, sew lines there. Don't worry about that because the head is gonna be here. If it's, like I say, like a sweater type of material, you have that extra piece and then you have your lines here and you can either have just a little piece down here or you could actually have that extra, uh, that, uh, that band. And that's more like when you're doing hoodies, you're doing hoodies and we'll get into that. As I start drawing the, the, the action pose and then dress them. I'll get into the clothes that I put on them more, but I just want to show you just the basics of clothes so that when you're starting to dress them, you'll know, oh, there's a line here or a jean pocket goes here or sweatpants only have like the band and they're really loose. So as I get into more of the drawing the picture, then I will show you more of the different types of clothes. So let's get into wrinkles, wrinkles. Now remember when I say wrinkles, folds, compression and pulls. So, oh yeah, um, the thicker your material, the less folds you have, let's just say wrinkles, let's just use that word wrinkles and that just stands for folds, pulls and whatever the other thing was. So yeah, so if this is really thick, like jeans, you won't have a lot of wrinkles in jeans because they're, they're, they're thick. But if you had something like uh, um, thin dress pants, then you would have, you know, you, you could have, but you don't want to draw that in your, in your um, picture because it just looks sloppy. So what you want to have is just the basic folds and bends and pulls in your uh, drawing or on your clothes. 
So again, you have to understand it before you can draw it. So let's do this. Let's do this. All right, let's just do a quick, quick body. That's my quick body. That's how you do a quick body. Now, you're going to have major folds or bends or wrinkles or twists in certain areas of your clothes or certain areas of the body. And that's where you, you move a lot and where is something that moves. Yes, I know you're not going to see it. It's really dark, so you might not be able to see it. So, in your elbows, right, in your elbows, in your decreases of your arms, on your knee, in the crotch area, are where you're going to get most of your, your big folds, bends, wrinkles, compressions. So, it's just like drawing a plus and an X. Yeah. Right here on the corners. It's like right here, right here. Just the, the plus and the X. Those are where you're going to get your wrinkles at. And then here too. Like that. So those are the major places that you're going to get them because your arm always bends. Your, your legs always bend. So you're going to get them there. So that's the main part. You don't have to worry about too much about all up here and down here and down here and down here and down here. Unless it's something that you want to do. But these are your major, major parts here. All right, let's talk about fabric. Now I've got this towel here. So you take fabric and you put it on something. It's going to be smooth. It's just going to be smooth until you push on it <clears throat> or pull on it. Let me remove this. <clears throat> So we have this smooth towel here. Now, when I push it together, it bunches up. Okay, camera, do right. So it bunches up. Now that's the same thing as if you draw a curtain. If you draw a curtain, here's your window. Here's your window, boom. And then you draw a curtain. Your curtain is not going to be flat like this. Where's my pin? Your curtain is not going to be like this just flat material like that even when you close it because there's a lot of material that they use for curtain if your curtain is open it's going to be like this you're going to have this wave up and down and the same thing here because you're bunching the material together the same way we did this you bunch it together so what that does is it makes way it makes rolls so if you look at it from a flat position, come on, it's going to do like this. This is laying flat. That's all it is. It's just pushing these together. The more you, the tighter you pull them together, you know, the more it's going to press together or compress together. So if this was a cape, let's just say this was a cape and we were looking at it from the bottom, that cape goes up like that. You're going to have these mountains like that. That's all it is. So this is going to be like this goes down and it's going to come up same thing over here it's going to go up and that's that's all it is and when you see this that's just the wrinkle of that material that is being compressed together let's see if i can compress this it. might be a little too big it's just that that's all you're seeing this these pieces come together like that so if i can open it up this material is like really thin and put it on the camera. It's going to be like that. So the thicker your material, the less wrinkles, I will use the word wrinkles, you will have. So if you took this and you put it on somebody, first of all, a person, uh, you, you're a cylinder. Your arms are cylinders, your legs are cylinders, as far as I'm concerned, your, your torso could be a cylinder too. So when you put that fabric on that, that cylinder, on that thing, you're going to start getting your pulls. The highest point to something is where you're going to get a pull. Let me grab my paper back again if my camera would do right. So let's just say you have a dining room table or a table or a little, little table somewhere. This is your table. Come on, do right. Thank you. This is your table here. Let's do this. More like a bar stool now because it's so fat. So you drape some cloth over it. The cloth is going to sit flat on top of that because you're not pulling at it. But when it goes over the edge, that's when you're going to start to get 
your poles. And when a cloth pulls, well, let me keep going and then we'll go, we'll go over that. It's going to right there, just about the edge. So if this table was this thick, instead of the, being a bar stool, so this is your wood, this is the material your wood goes here. So right at the bottom of this comes off, at the bottom of this, you're going to get your wrinkles. And it's just doing that, it's just like doing a U or a low, high mountain. It's like that. So let me let me do this again, like this. So right at the bottom of your where that wood is, not coming off the edge, like the bottom of it, you're going to get that. And if it's really bad or really thin, then you'll get this at the bottom. And these could go all the way to the bottom. Actually, this, this is it would be opposite the inner part. Like that so it would be like in out in out so these could go depending on the type of material it could go all the way to the bottom like a lot of skirts have those pleats in them and then they just have this line that goes here here and here that's kind of like the same thing if you're drawing a dress if you're drawing something round let's just say here's a round object right here and you drape fabric over top of that at the base of the um, roundness, I should say, okay, it's round, it's flat here, and it starts to round over here. So wherever it starts to round, that's where your material is going to wrinkle at. Like that. So if you draw like a ghost on a, in a sheet or something, It's gonna be like that, and just, it just and it's just like a upside down U or a mountain or A or whatever, whatever you figure is easiest for you to see. The letter A or um, a triangle, just round it off a lot, of, a lot, depending on the, the type of material. If it's, if it's gonna be thick or thin, the thicker it is, more the rounder it'll probably be. The rounder your your um, compression would be because these are in. And the other ones are out. So it goes out. All right. A couple more. And then we'll get into the drawing. Let's just say this is a pole. This is a pole or something. And then you drape your material over it just like this on the edge, depending on how thick that pole is. If, it's, if it has a, uh, um, a lip to it like that, like the chair, then I said then the wrinkles will come right here at the bottom where that other piece is my mind is dragging I don't know why hopefully you'll understand that so but if this is one solid piece and there's no there's no way so like if your material comes here it could dip in most of it's not gonna come out like that it'll come down gravity it'll come down and maybe dip in and that also helps to create those wrinkles. But if it's just one piece and you want to put your wrinkle edge right here, at, kind of at the top. Now, the reason I did this is uh, to say this whole thing was draped with a fabric that just comes down all the way down and it just, let's just say, stops at the bottom here. Now, if I took a strap or something and I put it across here, a strap right across here. Strap it down and it's on here tight, on this pole tight. But then there's material on the covering, the whole thing, just like this. If I take this, I put this material on here like this. And then I took something and I strapped it down around it like I took a rubber band or something and strapped it down to it like that. That material is going to come out. And I, see, I'm, 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 I'm losing the words. It's going to come tight it's going to come out like this and up and this and up too so right here where you have that strap you're going to have the letter u the letter, upside down u or v upside down u or, correct u or v just like that same thing here this one's going to be the a the letter a to show that this thing is, is tight the strap tight so if you have if that's a leg 
and somebody has pants on and you have like a, a strap for a gun, this is what it's, that's what it's going to look like. So if I drew it, you have this, you have your material coming down and it's going to go in because that band or whatever is pulling on that material. It's kind of like, and I'm trying to give you great examples. It's like if I have my arm and then I squeeze my arm that you can see like this, this the meat right here. You can see that kind of like going in and coming out because it's so tight. So it'd be the same thing with this. Your fabric will come in and out like that. And of course you will have your wrinkles or wrinkles or compression marks. I know some seamstress is like, what is he talking about? Compression marks and wrinkles and fabrics and so forth. So it would look like that. So if, you know, say if the guy had a, a wristband on or whatever, his um, fabric would look like that because it's so tight on him. Now, depending on the, the type of fabric, as I say, it could come all the way up or it could not come all the way up, depending on how thin that fabric is. And then of course, as I say, like here, and you want to keep them in line. You don't want to, you don't want to have like one, let's just see the, just say letter A here, one here on that line and one down here and then one up here. It has to stay even unless the surface is not even, unless the surface is like slanted. Show it on camera, Brian, unless your surface is slanted. So you're going to have, got to have them like kind of like just even. That was too high because my hand is, I'm drawing too fast. I don't like that. But all these things have to go across and you don't want too many. You don't want them like spaced out like perfectly. Like here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. Because fabric doesn't do that. Fabric just does its own thing. So if you had this coming down, you notice that you can see where that little edge is by where the shape stops at and as I say it just it stops in a line but the fabric is not it's not uniform shall we say I mean each, each line is not going to be straight unless you pull it unless you do it like that or you sew you sew you sew it up or you deliberately have it to where it's going to be every line is going to be straight and even and equal but if it's just laying across something the lines are going to be kind of everywhere now, when you have a wrinkle somewhere or you have a bend or compression somewhere, let's just say we'll do this upside down. We'll just use this, Brian. Let's just use this. So you have this. There is always going to be an opposite, shall we say. So you have that, which means you have another one in between. There's always an opposite. So the same thing here. So if these two came down, you would have opposite here I don't know if you, can, you actually understand that because that's kind of small let me see if I can show you what I'm saying again with my blanket my blanket my little cloth here it's flat right now so if I pull pull it I'll just grab it and pull it somehow some way so you have a wrinkle like this because it comes up on this mountain you're going to have a dip here and then because this goes up this side is going to go down and because this side is going to go up the more you push it now we have something else that comes up here so you're going to have an up and a down and an up and a down and an up and a down however you have one wrinkle you're going to force it to make another one so and they usually are um what's like the letters it's like a y a s and uh, something else. So you're going to have a wrinkle that's going to be like this, S, Y, and what was the other one? What was the other one? A U. Yeah, so anytime you have one, it's going to make the opposite of something else. And I'm trying to think of what kind of to draw so that you guys can understand. All right, so the life, for the life of me, I cannot think of a good example to draw, to show you what I'm saying. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna switch to this. Since my camera's this way, we're gonna go ahead and do it this way. And I wanted to do a bigger one, but I can't do it, so. 
Well, let's just do since since it's about since it's about poses. I'll go ahead and draw, and then you guys can kind of like keep up, maybe. So I'm trying to think of what I'm gonna do. What I'm gonna do it might be a little short because I wanted to draw it the long way, but. But hopefully you can see this to keep this on camera. I may have to pull the camera back a little bit. So this guy is a dancer or just a dancing position. You won't see that arm. Uh, I'll just have to keep shifting between camera. So as I said before, your major points are going to be here, 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 some in the knee and uh, some right here where the arm bends. So again, going back to the clothes, which were... Here, the important part is note your seams. Your seams where they're sewn together, where the two fabrics is, fabrics is fabrics are sewn together. That plays a very important part in doing all of this. So we have that. We know our seams are here and here. These are basic ones. So because you are because the this piece of fabric and these pieces of fabric are different. These two pieces of fabric, they're the same make, but they're two different pieces sewn together. It's going to pull at the part that is sewn, and your pulls are going to, or your stretches, this is yeah, your stretches, you have your stretch, and you have your compress, and then you have your folds, which make wrinkles. Because it's sewn here, your pulls are going to stop right here at this sewn part because this is a separate piece of material but they do pull kind of together and they're going to pull in the direction that something is going like if your arm is, is going up this is going to go up here and it's not going to go straight up like your arm so if I do this and whatever this is your this is what I just drew it's not going to go straight up a pull is not going to go straight up. So if I pull this, if I take this material, I put the pins down, and I pull it, it's going to go kind of that compression, but it's straight. The, but the thing is about your arm and so forth, if I laid this on my arm, if I laid this on my arm and it was straight, and this is my hand, you can't see it all. But when I move my arm, your arm is going to twist in some way. And because this is so tight, I can't do it because this is, it's, not, it's not sewn to anything. If I move my arm, it's going to twist. So it's going to twist that material as well. I should have had a long sleeve shirt on, but I don't. So if this is straight, which it is, and as I say I twist, I'm trying to grab this like that and pull this. So it can be pulled. I'm grabbing here. So that's going to be the sewn part of the seam. So it's like that. But if I twist my arm, that material is going to twist around. It's going to come back around to that seam. So anytime you twist your arm or your leg, it's going to cause that material to twist as well. And as I was trying to point out, like one wrinkle causes another wrinkle, and it's not wrinkles, it's, it's a twist. Causes another one, causes another one, causes another one. But you really don't want all that in your, your clothes. You don't want so many um, pulls, wrinkles in your clothes because the guy just looks like, you know, hobo homeless, especially if he's like a, a hero and he's got money or whatever. Tony Stark would never have like, you know, all these wrinkles and twists, but some places on the body, you're going to have to have them. But just remember when you pull, if, I, if my arm is just, just, just relaxed, but if I pull it and then I turn it a little bit, it's going to be a twist somehow. So the twist is always going to go in the direction you're pulling. So it's going to be like this. And remember what I say, it always is going to, one creates another one, but you don't want too many. 
So the same thing with here because this is a seam here and he, he turned his arm a little bit. So it is going to go over. So you only want a few and not all of them have to come all the way to the end. So you're going to be pulling up, out, and the same thing with this. Now, when it comes to pants, well, let's, let's not go to the pants yet. Now, because if this was tucked in, remember this, where did it go? Where did it go? Remember this, if these, this shirt was tucked in, let's bring this shirt all the way down and tuck it in. You're going to get this little outcropping little piece here and it goes into the belt. So if he has a belt on, and this part of the shirt was tucked in, you're still going to have that little piece come out. But as I say, this is separate piece from this, but to still work together. So it's going to pull especially if it's tucked in. So it's gonna pull because it's going in that direction. Not too many wrinkles, but it's all gonna pull there. And because this part is not really being pulled, you're gonna have some that kind of relaxes like that. You're gonna have like a wrinkle that relax. And remember what I said, one mountain, if something goes up, which these are lines that go up, there's gonna be a, a valley in that mountain. So you have this, these two that go up because it's pulling. So you're gonna have that little valley here that curves in. So this is where your shadow would go if you're doing um, inking. Same thing here, you could have one here. One goes up, one comes down, like that. But you, in, 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 depends on what you're doing. You don't wanna have a lot of, a lot of wrinkles in, in, in your clothes, it just kinda of looks bad. And of course, as I say, like this, this was gonna come around, this one's gonna be there, and this one maybe halfway, and then, this, depending on the chest, you could have some coming here and here, not too many. Remember one equals another. If you have two mountains side by side, you have a valley in there somewhere. Okay, now again, if this was not tucked in, let's just, I don't know if I can do this one. If you have your shirt coming down here, it's going to touch the highest part. Here's your circle, here's your circle, just like I did with this the widest part is going to touch and after that it's going to drape off so let's just say if this was your lats here and this is your waist this is your hip um minus your arm if you have a shirt coming here it's going to touch here and it's going to fall off here now if it's not tucked in you're going to have you're still going to have the wrinkles but it's going to be longer shall we say it's not going to have something to actually pull on so tightly. So the wrinkles are not gonna pull as much, they're still gonna pull, but they're not gonna pull as much. So if this is that, and you lifted your arm up, they would be there, but as I said, they won't be so tight. And one equals another. So it's gonna go in that same direction. And because there is nothing touching here, there's gonna be just that little dip. So if I ink this, I'm trying not to embarrass myself, it'd be something like this, that pull from that. And just like the curtains here at the bottom, if it's not tucked in, you could get this because this is in, this is out. If this one went in and it just stopped right there, um, one equals another. So if it kind of like stopped and tapered off, you would have maybe another curve here equals that. And that's that's the, the, the V, is it, is it, what is it? It's a V, it's a U, the wrinkles. It's a V, I remember now, because some are pointed, it's an S and it's a Y wrinkle. Usually when your stuff comes together, it's gonna to form kind of one of those little shapes somehow, some way. So you can have your U, or this one could be an S. Come on, your S somehow. This could be the U. There's probably a Y in there somewhere if I just wrinkle it more. But this is just things that you have to look out for. The more you draw, the, the better it'll, it'll become. I can't really explain everything in one video. It'll be a really long video. So, with pants, this is going to, you're going to have um, that compression on your pants because you're bending, you're bending, you're twisting your torso bending. So you're going to have this 
fold over top of another fold over top of another fold. And usually you, you see that when you draw comics in the underwear, but you're going to have this, this because your leg comes up here. So you're going to have a wrinkle here, here, usually here. Now, because it's not stretching, this leg is not stretching. You won't, it won't be too, too long of a wrinkle. That was that hand gesture. So it's going to be like this, like this. And remember one equals another, this equals another. And it depends on the material. So this one, <clears throat> this one, because he's stretching a little bit, it's going to come down. And remember, it's not going to come straight down because it's going to twist around your um, appendage. This is going to be like that. But you don't want to have like so many wrinkles, as I said before. So it's going to come down like this, like this, probably like that. And then here's your pants right there. And if it comes around, you have to have that lip. If that wrinkle comes around, or if it's thick enough to come around off your pants, it's going to do like that. So this one could stop here. Let's just say to take this one all the way. And you have that lip again on that little mountain, which equals another wrinkle. The mountain always equals a valley. And then your pants. So if I say if these were slacks, because slacks would have long, thin, thin folds. And I'm just going to say wrinkles, folds. You'll understand. Follow me. And then you have, let's just say because of that. You have this seam line like that. So it would look like he's dancing in some nice slacks. Now, if he had jeans on, well, okay, let's put some wrinkles here or some compressions here because you always have those fold because you, your body twists, your hips twist there. And remember, one line equals another line. And... This side would be jeans. Now, well, okay, so you have that. And this is where it's bunched together, just like a curtain. And then there. So now in your legs, in your knees, and we'll get into Every time I do a drawing, I'll get more into it. You're going to have just a little bit of bunch because your knee always does that. Bunches up the material. And then let's just make it round like that. So, and I'll just put another line there. Remember, one equals another. You don't really want to have, because you have the, the V and you can have another one here and you can have another one here. And it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle almost if you're trying to do a whole bunch of wrinkles, because one always is going to equal another unless it just fades out. So like I said, this is the valley, this is the mountain, this is the mountain, this is the valley. Uh, comes over here, one mountain equals a valley. And this could go all the way up. It depends on what you want to do to your wrinkles. But, and I'm saying the word wrinkles again. <laughs> and from the jeans, if you saw the inside, you'd see the seam. It's going to go around here and then down. And these are just jeans. And you, of course, you got to have your pocket somewhere, your... Um, the little zipper part. So does he have a belt? I'm going to turn that into a sweater. So because you have your mountain and your valleys, it's going to curve over, come up, curve over, come up. And then that, and again, curve over, come up. And that helps to, sh to show that um, you have folds in your clothes. So wherever the mountain is and wherever the valley is, take a line right through that. And so this is the valley. So this is going to be a little darker, or you're going to have, might have the shadow through here, through there. And we can just, for the sake of laughs, I'll put a little line right there. Um, I said, jeans won't have that, that center crease. Um, you're not going to see a pocket. I can put a pocket here, but it, it'll, you won't really see it. Unless you're doing some crazy, stupid, good detail, you won't really see it because it'll be covered up. It could be covered up by shadow or anything. So we got this. Got this. Got this, the pulls. And this is a quick raggedy ink job. So don't don't quote me and you have your part that comes out. And remember, wherever it's tight, if it's tight in a thing, you're gonna have that little U or that A. Like that because it's it's tight down in there. So if I turn this into more of a sweater type, it'll still be like that. 
because this is another piece of material right here that is sewn into so you still have these right here and remember one mountain equals a valley a uh, valley equals a mountain and you could just go on and on and infinitum so it's just kind of really it's going up here and it stops on these creases and then it could be the same thing here one is going to be an a and the other is going to be a u and then we have this which curves over the arm like that we have another one let's just say curves over that arm we have three that curve over that arm and then we have that and then the rest goes here so i'll just have pull right here as well like so so when you lift your arm up you're going to have more bunches right here over your shoulder and i'll just do this t-shirt we're going to have these folds and depending on the material it could come all the way down it doesn't have to come all the way down it can but when you have one mountain you have a valley so this one's not going to have so many here because it's going to stretch remember your seam your seam is very important for your pulls i'm not going to say wrinkles say pulls because they're all going to come from the seam so this one is going to come here and over maybe there and over and then that one will stop right there coming from that seam and again if the guy has a, 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 a nice size chest, you're going to get that little shadow under there to help for that pull. But that's only if it's pulling from one side. Because if you stretch material, and let's just say this is the chest. And it's abs. So he's got a tight shirt on. Say there's no wrinkles on this. This just it's just stupid tight. Just like Batman or something like that. When you pull something on the edges, because it's hitting the edges, it's gonna be pulls like this. Like I don't know if this towel will do it. It might do it. It might not. It probably will because my hands are, are bang. So you have the, the tighter it pulls flat. If I'm pulling it, work camera you're going to get these pulls now it, it might not go all the way across it depends on how tight i'm pulling it so if this guy has a tight shirt on if you draw somebody with a tight shirt it's going to have these pulls like that under the chest you know and because the chest is like this the chest comes up in up in you will have these pulls from inside there and as I said you have the pulls there but because it's round because your your body's round I just lost that one don't worry about it just just forget that one so of course your shirt is going to be tight against the side of your body or whatever that 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 thing is that is on it's going to be tight against that same thing with the arms if it's like tight on the arms remembering that it's round I think that's what I was going to say remembering that it's round so it has to be you have to go around kind of like that so now if I'm drawing just just for the, for the sake of it if I'm drawing somebody let's just say here's an arm now let's just put the arm all the way down here's an arm my superhero this is my superhero's arm so I have to show the muscle because he's in his superhero costume. Let's say you give him some wristbands and whatever. So instead of having him just, you know, just straight naked like they all are, I will just throw a few wrinkle lines in like where I know it bends at. And then it looks like he has some type of clothes on. Just very few. I don't want it to be like a tight sweater just a couple to indicate that oh yeah this guy you know he's really muscular and his this costume is like pulling i mean that's that's a natural right there i mean that could be the striations of the chest 
So, but just you know, just a few, just a few to show that this person has some kind of um, fabric on them. Yeah. So, going back to this, you may get some in the arm, you may not, depending on you know what the fabric is. If you just if it's like loose cotton, maybe maybe not. So, and you do this, and then put your head however you want to put the head on. It's got nothing to do with the head. It's got fabric, and then your shoes. And we'll get into shoes also, but there's so many different type of shoes. But I would say the best thing to do is to go out and um, not go out, just go and find examples like if you want to put nikes on them or converses on them or whatever it's just the structure of the shoe because everybody's different every every you know little thing is different everything has a heel though so you have bottom do right brian let's just say here's the side of the foot that's just as a triangle here's that this is the side of the foot your shoe is going to be here you have this little piece between your shoe your foot part and your heel part and that's one thing people don't really see is when you're drawing a shoe or something. You have your heel and you have this little piece here. And then on top of that, you have your shoe. So just, just little things like that you, we don't really think about because we don't think about it. And then there's a wrinkle right here where, you're, where, you're, um, where your foot bends and your toe bends. That's more of a boot. So anyway, we're going to end this. So now you kind of have a preview of what's going to happen further ones when we start doing, um, when I start doing action poses and putting clothes on them. It's just basically you have to know where the hard part, your, your, your major bends and folds are going to be at. You're going to need to know the type of folds, bends and twists you have how something was going to drape across, whether it be an arm or a leg or a knee or something like that, and um, how clothes are actually stitched or made or designed. So other than that, we are going to call this one quits. So hopefully I can get another one out. I can start pushing these out because I know it took me some time between this one and the last one because stuff is happening in the world. All right, so that's going to be it for this lesson. Class is dismissed. Leave a thumbs up. If you like that, leave a thumbs up. Tell a friend. That's most important. Help me grow my channel. You have a, um, Facebook, all those things like that. Tell people that you're learning how to draw and leave a link to my channel. Help a man grow his channel. And uh, hit the notification bell so that you'll know when I, when I upload another video. So that's it. Let's all go eat breakfast because it's early in the morning. All right, I'm out. Put my pins down. Boom. See you later.